Good morning, my friends. Welcome to the so I am really excited to talk with you this morning about all of, about all of the things because why would we not talk about all of the things? It um, seems ridiculous to not talk about all of the things. I'm really, really excited. I just it's it's so interesting to me how things all kind of come about. I've just got off a Zoom call with a lady in the US who is very, uh, very smart. Hey Jess, about, she, she does this intuitive painting and then uh, kind of does a reading around it and stuff like that. And those of you who have known me for any length of time know that I kind of have this, um, this love of the woo, right? We might call it the love of the woo woo. And also very much, hey Rebecca, happy Wednesday. And, and also this very, strong need to be very grounded, right? So the thing that I've, I talk about a lot is around, you know, structure and flow. Uh, I talk about trusting yourself. I talk about finding, you know, finding the way for you. And, and what was really interesting for a lot of years, and I'm not talking like just like two or three, many years, I, and this is how it relates to confidence, right? For many, many years, I used to think that there was a certain way that you had to show up, a certain way that you had to be, a certain way that we had to run programs, a certain way that we had to do all of the things that we have to do in order for us to be able to deliver the things that we're delivering, right? And and I guess for me, the thing that, that I, I talk a lot about is for you to find your space, right? So we know that confidence is often something that is is missing or it's like that elusive that elusive dress that you've seen fly through your newsfeed and you're like, oh, I've got to go back and get that and then you can't find it again or that great pair of pants or a, a treadmill or something that's come through your newsfeed and you're like, oh, wow, yeah, got to do that. And then it like flitters off into the, the Facebook sphere and you've got to try, try and find a way to find it again, right? And I know for me that trying to uh, trying to find that thing again can prove elusive or it comes way back in later. Where I'm going with this is that confidence can often be the same thing. It's like we can think that we're just like kind of like, okay, I, I've got this and then poof, it can go. The thing that we all need, in my opinion, that every single person needs to get better at doing is really trusting yourself. Now, just really quickly, because I've just had the prompt come up, just really quickly before I go on, I know I have to remind you about Visible Live that is happening at the end of this month. So the 25th and the 26th of September, you will have a content framework. You will know exactly how to unlock your, your genius, your intellectual property, everything that you could possibly need in order for you to put yourself out there. So that, that's that. Now, what's really interesting about this uh, intuitive painting thing that this session that I just that I just was was a part of, what was really interesting to me is that how how I am is I used to think it was wrong, right? Now, let me give you some reference. So I've I've been part of entrepreneur groups and and business owner groups and in masterminds and and mentorships and and all of this that and the other for, for the last ten years, and the thing that I always ad admired and envied really uh, other people for was their their creativity, right, and the way that they could just like seemingly were just able to kind of blah, 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 you know kind of free flow. Where for me, I used to think that there was something wrong with me. I used to think that it that I wasn't at the same level, at the same standard. I used to really get caught up there. Like we know that this is, this is comparisonitis, right? That's you know that's what we're talking about when we're looking at other people and we're like so envious of of what they can do or uh, how how they do things and whatever. That's where that's that's comparisonitis in its finest most annoying form. And I used to beat myself up a lot. It's like, well, this is why I'm not where I want to be. And that's because I don't have the ability to, this is what I used to tell myself. 
It's like I don't have the ability to kind of channel the information. I don't have enough time and experience in the industry. I don't have a big enough Facebook page. I don't have a big enough audience. I don't have a big enough email list. I don't have, you know, it was always like I don't have. And it was all very much external, right? And I used to feel like <clears throat> that, that the people who were seemingly successful were the ones that seemed to just be able to be like super creative or, or whatever else. And for me, I, I used to be really envious and really jealous of that because I didn't place enough value in my own natural abilities. I didn't value those highly enough, even though I always knew that this was something that was uh, really, really important for me. So the history behind this is I came from a 12 year career in corporate banking and very structured, very rigid. You have to work within frameworks. There are ways of, 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 of massaging things in order to make it look appealing to say a credit department and, and things like that. So one of the, the things I think for me that was kind of like this hangover of transitioning from something that was so structured that I loved and that I thrived in, I thought to be an entrepreneur, or scratch that, I used to think in order to be a successful entrepreneur, I had to be particularly, in quotes, creative uh, and very um, intuitive, let's say. And I didn't feel like I was any of those things. I honestly did not think that I was creative. And having said that though, you know, I could be creative with a spreadsheet. <laughs> I could be creative with creating a framework. And, and what I did for a really long time was I kind of played down the how much I love structure and frameworks and how they, for me, are the gateway for me to be able to go and do what it is that I do. So, for instance, some of the things that I'll do, it's like this photo shoot that I did last week. And I got laughed at. One of my clients, Dr. Tess Crawley, was kind of teasing me a little bit. I, I did this reel. And uh, in the reel, I had some behind the scenes photos. And of course, I had a photo, and this is not it, but I had a photo of the... Um, the outfit list, because I was like, I've got to make sure that I want a good five or six outfit changes. This is what I really need. And this is how I need to do it. You know, so I knew exactly what the, the purpose of these photos were. So for me, it's like, all right, I, I get very caught up in story and I get caught up in playing. So if I don't have that structure, I'm screwed because we can run out of time. And I'm like, but shit, I'm still in my first outfit. <laughs> like this isn't working for me. I need more time. And so for me, what, what really, really works for me is, uh, is that uh, having the, the plan or the framework or the structure, because then it enables me to really kind of flow. And it was so interesting because this painting that we did this morning demonstrated that. She said, oh, look, yeah, you've got that fierce focus, that fierce concentration, and you've got that kind of element too. But then that's the thing that, that creates all of that, that flow and that expression. Rebecca, you're very creative and intuitive though. Creativity isn't just art and craft based skills. Yeah, I agree with you now, right? I absolutely, like I am sold, right? And I don't want to refund. Like I am so, I can, could not agree with you more. But for me, I always, I, I, I underestimated the power of what I do and the way that I do it. And I think that this is something that's really, really common, right? Because it's, it's, it's really curious. I used to look at people in my industry who were doing things really well. And I'm like, wow, you know, if only I had a, a, a tenth of their confidence or a tenth of their sass or a tenth of their wit or a tenth of their intuition or, or whatever, like I'd be freaking flying. But the thing that I underestimated about me and, and the thing that I, that I <laughs> forgot was that it's actually okay for me to be me. 
right? And the reason I'm sharing this is because if I've gone through this and I speak to clients all the time who go through this, they're like, well, how should I be on social media? How, how should I, like, what kind of character? It's almost like, what kind of character should I become in order to be on social media? That's not the words that they use, but that's basically what they're asking. And the thing is, it's not about becoming someone else. It's more about you having the confidence to really step in and be you. And to me, the thing that I have learned and I witnessed the transformation over and over again with thousands and thousands of people over the years is that when, you, when you've got a way, particularly if you're very, uh, very creative, you've got lots of ideas, you, you, there's a bazillion different ways that you could do what you do or that you could help people with, you know, that can become quite overwhelming in itself. Because it's like, well, I could do this, 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 I could do this. And to me, when you've got all of those options, that's freaking overwhelming. It's like, what the fuck do I pick? How do I know that I'm going to choose right? How do I know that this is going to work, right? And so, you know, those those kinds of people like tend to um, live in the land of indecision. And that then perpetuates this feeling of kind of stuckness and this feeling of, of, of um, you know, not quite knowing indecision, you know, not quite knowing where to move forward. And, and they kind of forget how fucking amazing they are. And maybe I'm talking to you. Maybe you've forgotten how freaking amazing you are. So like there's all of that, right? And then you've got the other people on the other side who are incredibly structured. And this is sort of how I used to define myself. I'm just very, I did not think I was creative. I did not think I was intuitive. I um, thought I was work my way, work my way around a spreadsheet, make things work very, very easily, but I didn't think that was creative. And so like, I know that there's a lot of people who are like, but I really like to know what I'm going to say, how I'm going to say it, where I'm going to say it, how I'm going to use that. I need all of the steps. I need all of my ducks in a row. I need everything done. I need all, all there. And what those people do, and I know that this this is me as well, or was me as well. I'm like, well, I, I've, I've got to get all of my ducks in a row. I can't go and put myself out there because I haven't got this ready, this ready, this ready, this ready, this ready. And so for those people, what they'll do is they'll hold back on putting themselves out there because they want to try and make it all perfect. Now, I don't know about you, but you can put your hands up if you're a recovering perfectionist or if you are a perfectionist. I am most definitely a recovering perfectionist. I am definitely on the wagon of the perfection in the perfection recovery program. Sometimes I fall off it, fall off the wagon, but most of the time I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good these days in terms of taking imperfect action. But the challenge for, for you guys who are, are, want to have all of the bits in, in there and want to know everything before you put yourself out there, you're never going to know everything. That those little ducks, like, they fly off. They don't stay in a cute little line. We've got some really gorgeous, um, there's some swans down, we, we, see us, we see these swans down the river every morning. Uh, at the moment as when we're walking and there's a beautiful little spring ducklings that are that are kind of like waddling around and they're so friendly and so lovely oh yeah Rebecca I'm glad it's not just me but they don't all walk in a line you know there's there's a the the mum swan that I assume I'm, I don't know swan family dynamics so I'm just going to make some shit up for a second I'm assuming it's a mummy swan and a daddy swan, and then there's all the little baby, uh, the little baby ducklings, and and they're very cute. They're not at all ugly, right? They're not at all ugly. So we've got the mummy swan that kind of like is really close with the with the ducklings, but the little ducklings are going off all over the place. I assume they're called ducklings. They're, they're off all over the place, and then the daddy swan's like a bit removed, kind of like I'm going to protect the brood. And, and you can see that even when this particular one, that, and it, maybe the roles are reversed, I don't know. I'm being very guessy. Uh, about, I'm, 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 we're, we're playing the swan guessing game, swan family dynamics. So the dad swan is like eating, but constantly eat, eat, and then look up and, and looking around at what's going on, duck, 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 and then like that. But these little ducklings are all going everywhere. So if you are trying to get all your ducks in a row, 
it is a fruitless effort. It is, a, it is something that you are never going to be able to achieve, right? Which is a really great excuse for not getting to where you want to be, for not doing the things that you really want to do, for not putting yourself out there, for not stepping into the spotlight, for not being visible, for kind of just staying a little bit, well, invisible and safe and secure, right? So we've got these two types of people. We've got one side who have got all of the ideas and everything else, but, but don't necessarily have that confidence. Then we've got the people who are, are very much, I've got the structure, I've got the plans, I've got the blueprint, I've got the outline, I've got everything done, and it's all of that kind of thing, yeah? <laughs> Rebecca said there's a meme that says something like, my ducks aren't in a row, I have squirrels, and they're at a rave. Yes, exactly! Right? This is exactly what, you know, when, when a lot of the time people who are very driven by kind of structure, that's really what's going on. And by the time you finish the plan and you get your ducks in a row, it's like the back ones off over there again. You know, they just, they just run wild and, and they're, they're a little bit crazy. So how do you, you know, to me, it's like, how do you, how do you make this work? How do you get past it? For me, the thing that I'm fucking amazing at if I can be so bold as to declare to the world what I'm amazing at without being uh, egotistical, without being, what is it, like narcissistic, just the fact of the matter it is, is that I'm fucking amazing at helping people who have got all of these ideas and need a framework and all of these people who are constantly trying to plan, 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 plan to be able to get into a framework that enables you to get out there and do the things that you need to do in terms of growing your visibility, growing your confidence, stepping more into the spotlight so that you can help the people that you really want to help. The way that this intuitive painter described it, and I was like, oh, yeah, she said, like, most people live at one extreme or the other, or they kind of sit on the fence. You said, Nicola, like you've got this ability of going from one to the other and actually bringing it together and then tying it a bow and then, and then doing the thing. And I said, it's exactly what I do, which doesn't explain it very well, but that is what I do. So the way that I do this, my gateway to me being able to uh, download information for me being able to feel inspired for me to be able to show up and, and talk without any notes at all for half an hour 20 minutes half an hour every single day on a live stream is because I've got a bit of a framework around like I know I've got these I've got the framework that I rely on and then I can just look at something over there for example I'll show you so you'll see that uh, like that this thing over here, right? So all I need to do every day is go, hmm, what am I going to talk about today? I'll look over there. I'll, I'll see something. And I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah, great. Because for me, that structure creates the space for flow. So the thing that you need to work out is what is your natural way of accessing your zone of genius? For me, another really big thing, for me to feel like I'm, I'm getting ideas, I need to move. If I don't move, so if I don't go for a morning walk, if I don't um, work out, if I don't do something where I'm moving, I can feel really lethargic, but I can almost feel like I'm in a depressive state. When I'm anxious, if I don't move, that anxiety kind of builds up. So it's a really good, number one, it's a really good release of negative energy for me. And it's also a really, it's when I get my ideas. So what is it for you? Because you will have your own unique kind of doorway or gateway for you to be able to access all of the information that you want to be able to access, which is basically how you access your intuition. So some people do this by, um, by learning different things, right? So it's, it's about being intellectually motivated or sorry, uh, intellectually inspired. So that might mean if you know that it helps you to access your, your flow state, your slipstream, your zone of genius to be able to create all these ideas. Some people get that from studying. Other people get it from movement, 
right? So I'm um, very much a mover. When I, uh, like I always talk with my hands, <laughs> you, you may have been distracted by them. I sometimes get distracted by them. Uh, when I'm on stage, I'm, I'm wor I work the stage and it's not trying to uh, influence or manipulate anybody. It's just, it's literally, it's how I can keep the, 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 the ideas flowing, right? So movement's another way. Another thing that, that people might use is by making sure that everything is all aesthetically pleasing. So this is another really high driver of mine. I like my house to look very nice. If my house does not look nice, it messes with my head and I will be distracted. So I know for me to be able to get ideas and to feel like I'm operating at maximum efficiency, I've got to have my house needs to be nice and tidy, not OCD, but definitely nice and tidy. I've, I've recovered from the OCD of vacuuming my carpet so that there's lines in them. It still makes me so happy, but I don't have to do that now every day. Uh, movement's really important. Studying can be really important. And and, and there's other things that, there's, there's other ways of being able to get in. So for me, Again, some people will find journaling is really helpful because if you're just kind of purging the stuff in there or you're asking yourself questions, then that's a really great place to start in order for you to find the, the pathway for you to get your ideas and the pathway for you to actually be able to find the confidence to show up with courage and certainty and to, for you to be able to communicate what you need to be able to communicate out into the marketplace. The thing that I have found through the last, uh, well, the start of 2019, I started teaching, actually it was the end of 2018, I started teaching the a, a framework, basically like how you build that thing, right? Which I call a web of awesome. Uh, I, I started teaching, I, I, I used it for me first, I developed it for me, I refined the tool, and then I started teaching it to clients and it blew their minds. And the reason for that is that it's a framework for your marketing, for your intellectual property, for your, your creativity to really flow because you've got a framework and a structure in which to work in. You've got prompts. Basically what it does, and this is the other thing I'm really amazing at, if I do say so myself, is pulling ideas out of your brain, getting them onto paper in a way that's logical so that you can then use those ideas to go and be visible, to go and step into the spotlight, to go and create content, to go and get clients, to go and write books, to go and build courses, to go and do all of those things that you really, really want to do. And that's the thing that I think is just completely invaluable. And we're doing that at the end of September. So the link is in the comments for that. It is happening on the 25th and the 26th of September. It is a Friday, Saturday. It's only $497 for a full two days. And you'll have your next 18 months at least worth of content mapped out, ready to go. So that you've got that, for those of you who really rely on structure, you've got the structure to create the space for that creativity to flow. For those of you who are super creative and you've got all of these ideas, it gives you a framework to put those in so that you can feel like you can actually action them. So that, that, that way it means that all of those ideas don't lie dying a very slow and painful death in the idea graveyard or in the inspiration graveyard, right? It's about using all of that in order for you to be able to get out there and actually do something with all of the amazing sorry about that, that you have got within your brain. If you have any questions about that, please make sure you let me know. But the best thing that I can ever, ever suggest that you do is have a bit of a, well, actually, no, the first thing that I can tell you to do, if I'm going to tell you to do something, it's this. Trust that whatever you find is your natural way of finding your, your source of inspiration the natural way for you communicating with your audience, trust that the way that you want to do things and the way that you find natural is okay, right? So if it's about being uh, being kind of, um, a girlfriend of mine called it being preachy. If you find that it's easy for you to kind of be like a preacher, be being preachy, 
then do things that way. If you find it easier to be a little bit more, all right, you guys, you know, we're going to go through one, step two, step three, step four, and be a bit more educational driven, then that's fine. If you're more of an inspirational kind of person who likes to weave stories and things through, that's excellent. You know, it doesn't matter how you are or who you are, the best way or the best tool, the best thing that is going to cut through all of this noise and all through this bullshit online is you, right? And and obviously, like perhaps like maybe a, a slightly amped up version of you, depending on, on what you're doing. And it's about, you know, being very respectful of the environment in which you're going into. So if it's social media, you know, you want to show up, yes, as you, but the best version of you, right? Every single day, because that's the thing that's going to cut through. That's the thing that's going to help people get to know you like you trust you. That's the thing that that people will look for. And that's the reason why they'll buy from you versus some other uh, clap trap snake oil person that can't actually necessarily, or maybe they can, you know, do what they say they're going to do, but not in the way that you do it. And your audience are waiting for you. So, that is what you need to do. So I'm going to love you and leave you. Happy Wednesday. Happy hump day. Get out there. Go help some people. Have a whole ton of fun doing it. And remember, the world is ready for your brand of awesome. And I can't wait to see your registration for Visible Live coming up on the 25th and the 26th of September. It will change your life. It will change your business. It will change your marketing. It will change your results for the better forever. I promise, hands down, I absolutely know that to be 110% true. So I hope to, hope to see you there. Have an amazing day and I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye.